Assalamu alaikum. Homosexuality in LGBTQ communities have been growing in acceptance more than ever by each year. And this is an issue that needs to be addressed, especially as Muslims. It is very clear in Islam that this action is haram, and this can be concluded from the story of Lut and his qawm. Lut salam warns his people, Will you not fear Allah? And then he also says, Do you commit immorality while you are seeing? Do you indeed approach men of desire instead of women? Rather, you are a people behaving ignorantly. In the previous verse, it was clearly directed towards males who commit immoral actions with other males, and this also applies to females. The homosexuals go against the normal fitrah or normal disposition which Allah has created in which man is inclined to female and vice versa. If you go to non-Muslim countries, you see that people there have multiple relations because they get tired of the first, so they start doing unnatural things. They don't follow the law of their creator, and they try to satisfy their urges in the wrong way. And if you keep on doing this the unnatural wrong way, you keep on going beyond what is natural, and that's how many people become homosexual. There are many other ways such as being near these people and getting influenced, etc. Many say it is a genetic trait. However, it is not a genetic trait because you go beyond the limits of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted you. Even in Christianity, homosexuality is prohibited and in the majority of other religions. But the West allows it because of democracy. In democracy, whatever democracy says, you win. Majority wins. In Islam, majority doesn't win. The haq wins. The truth wins. There is no controversy in the 14 and a half centuries of our ummah. No alim has ever and no person has ever justified this act as being moral and Islamically permissible. And the story of Prophet Lut is very clear in the Quran. There is absolutely no question that the people of Lut were guilty of multiple crimes. But the predominant crime that is associated with them multiple times is that of same gender relations. And we cannot simply dismiss this story and say there is no point in revealing it, or it was figurative. The story is explicit, and the Qur'an is very clear, and there is unanimous consensus in this regard, however. With all of this, we also need to be very clear what is forbidden in our religion is the action of intimacy outside of merit. What is not forbidden, what the Sharia does not forbid, are the feelings of your heart. The Sharia does not encourage it whatsoever, but it does not forbid. What our heart lusts for, the Sharia will not punish you based on our feelings of the heart. But you have to keep in mind that the Sharia does not encourage it, and you should not have those feelings in the first place. Similarly, if a married male sees a woman who is attractive other than his wife, he will not be punished for that. But if that attraction affects his actions, then he will be punished. As Islam teaches us, we cannot treat these individuals any less just because of their feelings. If that Muslim individual is spreading it and agreeing with it, then you must acknowledge it to them and the rest is between them and Allah. Just like these people can do whatever they want legally, we can also criticize verbally. We can criticize morally. We as Muslims do not believe this lifestyle is healthy. We do not believe that it is spiritually uplifting. We do not believe that it is something that itself will lead one to Allah. But Allah forgives all sins to the one who repents. And we ask Allah to guide us to the straight path. And to guide everyone who is a sinner to the correct understanding of Islam. And acting upon it. And we ask Allah to forgive our sins. And to manifest and magnify our good deeds. Jazakallahu khairan. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته